So, you know, it's funny. You know I wasn't a Baker guy. And I like my quarterbacks to be quarterbackial and my presidents, presidents to be presidential. <laughs> so when you watch Baker blow up at that reporter, if you were on that team and you saw that like on the screens in the locker room or something and you saw that going on, what would be your feeling? You may not verbalize it, but what would be your feeling if your quarterback was battling like that regularly with the media? So first and foremost, it would be a, it would be slightly different because being in a locker room with an individual, you kind of know their tendencies and you kind of know who they are outside of the media being present. And so with with knowing some of the guys in that locker room, Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham Jr., like they're going to go to bat for a guy like Baker Mayfield because he's passionate about the game. Obviously, he has issues with talking too much and saying the wrong thing and he he displayed it right there uh showing that you know he's he's a little bit of a hothead he's he's gonna feel like he's right he knows what he's doing what he's talking about and it it want he wants it to be done his way when you get into a position like that and then you get labeled which i've always said this everyone in the national everyone in sports has a label at some point throughout their career. Once you're labeled, it is on you to either confirm that or to oppose that. How you do that is displayed every single day. Baker Mayfield fell into the trap and the Cleveland Browns did not want to stay in that marriage with him. So they get rid of him. And it's, it is what it is, but you can't do that as a quarterback, as a leader. You can have moments. But when you have repeated moments over and over, time and time again, you become the problem instead yeah. of the solution. Yeah. So it, it's interesting about this stuff. Um, one of the reasons I've said I've downgraded the Packers this year is I have a resume and a history with Aaron, and he's got a little bit of trust issues. It, take, it took him a while to trust Donald Driver or Greg Jennings or Jordy Nelson or Devontae Adams. The history is you got to show him. He's got to trust you. And I think later in his career – even more so now because there's a legacy to protect. Aaron makes you earn that trust. Throwing in Sammy Watkins and an FCS receiver, I'm like, okay. Matt Stafford recently said he is in constant communication with Allen Robinson, the new Rams receiver, in constant communication. And and I look at Aaron and I think, I'm not sure if Aaron's a constant communication guy. Do you have some doubts Based on Aaron's history, a bunch of new guys, no number one. Do you have some doubts about going forward what it's going to look like? It's interesting you say that, Colin, because uh, from the outside looking in, yes, that is the case. He does make you earn his trust. Uh, but typically when you think about Aaron Rodgers in his career, when, when he took over for Brett, that offense was pretty much established. Donald Driver was eight, nine years in. I was two years in then. Uh, so the offense was already established. He inserted himself, and then the guys who came after kind of had to wait. They don't have that right now. Alan Lazard, yes. Is he a, is he a veteran? Is he a smart player? But he's not the guy that you're going to just completely lean on and say, hey, Alan, this is your team now. No. So I, with that being the case, He's always had a at least a one person yeah. that he can rely on yes. that this is my guy. Yep. I don't think he has any other option now other than to hurry the process along. So I think we're going to see a different Aaron Rodgers. I think we're going to see a guy that's like, look, I got to take chances. We're going to have growing pains. He understands this. How he deals with it is going to let us know how successful this team is going to be. How he nurtures it is going to let us know how quickly this team is going to be right back in the fold of contender. Yeah. So uh, I think, you know, we we're a couple of weeks out from camp and most guys are in reasonable shape. Uh, I, I, you know, I think there's cert I think Minnesota is going to be the most improved team in the league. I've said that. I think Kirk Cousins has a new deal. They have an offensive coach. I think last year the locker room was bad. I also think the division's I don't think Green Bay's is good. I don't know what I'm getting from Chicago or Detroit. So I think Minnesota is going to be the most improved team in the league. I think the most interesting team could be Miami because they have literally pivoted from Brian Flores, kind of a rigid defensive guy, 
to a Kyle Shanahan, very quarterback-friendly offense. Jalen Waddell, Cedric Wilson, Tyreek Hill. And people think Tyree's a deep threat, but about 75 to 80% of Tyreek's stuff is bubble screens and slants. Everybody wants, you know, Andy Reid got him the ball really fast and let him go. Kind of your expectations. I think two is limited. Maybe you don't. What do you think Miami looks like this year with all the weaponry and Tua basically facing a show us or you're gone year? I actually think they're going to be a really good team. And if we think about Miami, even last year, um, they were a good team. Like defensively, we know they're going to be stout. And, And when you look in that division, you have to be able to be stout defensively because everybody else is going to pretty much be stout. New England, the Bills, Robert Sala with the Jets, they're defensive-minded coaches. So what does that mean? That means your offense, your quarterback, has to be able to either manage the game successfully, not turn the ball over, or just be a flat-out Allen, like Josh Allen type guy. We know Tua's not that guy. What he has to do is just manage the game. Be smart. Be Understand when to take chances, when to make plays with his arm, and when to allow his offense to be what it is. And I think that's what's going to help him successfully progress as a player. He's got a coach that's on the offensive side of the ball now, in his ear, at the helm, and he's going to thrive simply because, just like Kyle Shanahan, uh, they're going to try to run the ball. They're going to try to support him with the running game, not just those guys that they got. We understand we have – you you call us icing. We're just we're just loved by everyone because of what we do from a skill set <laughs> at the wide receiver position. But you can't just solely rely with a young guy like Tua who hasn't proven that he can hold the team on his back or carry the team on his back. You got to rely on more than just him, and that's the running game. And I think that's what they're going to do. If they can do that, they'll be successful this year. So uh, Rams won a Super Bowl. Um, You tell me, when you win a Super Bowl, is camp harder? Is it hard to get motivated? What do you expect? Was it harder for you? You know, you got that ring. Everybody loves you. You're on all the commercials. Is it a little harder to get motivated? No. So here's the thing. It's, it's It's not harder to be motivated. You want to do it. You want to capitalize on that that success, that personnel that you know you have coming back. And so is it harder to get motivated? No. It's harder to stay motivated the entire season and to stay hungry like you were previously when you've never tasted that feat. When you haven't tasted winning a championship, that's all you think about. That's all you want. There's very few individuals. That's why Tom Brady is such uh, uh, anomaly, LeBron James, guys, because they're not thousands of athletes that just have that psyche of, you know what, I won last year, it doesn't matter, erase the erase the slate, let's start back over, I'm just as hungry, I'm even more hungry, I got even more to prove. There are not many players like that. There's not many athletes that have that type of mentality. With that being said, the Rams will be hungry. I think they understand they have another opportunity to do something special after this year, things might change for sure. Greg Jennings, good seeing you, bud. Likewise. All right. You know, one thing. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.